Here we have factoring a quadratic with leading coefficient of one. So when we're doing these problems, um, there's two different kinds of quadratics or trinomials. And the difference is, is that when you have ax squared plus bx plus c, or any trinomial, okay? If this a is one, it looks like this, okay? And there's no number in the front, okay? And that's what these are. These are all problems with the leading coefficient of one, okay? When you have this a in front, it requires a whole other process, okay? And that process that we learned for this type of problem can be used for this type of problem. So generally, when I teach um, these classes, I normally teach just the one method, and then we use it for both types of problems. However, I notice that Alex tries to explain this problem a little bit differently. And so um, just to say somewhat consistent, because the way I show the work is not going to be exactly the way the computer does it in Alex. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit different. But essentially what you're doing is you're looking for, you're going to try to find the factorization. Okay, now I know that z times z will equal z squared. What I want is a number times another number that will give me 18, but at the same time will subtract to give me 7. Okay, so this number right here tells me I'm going to subtract the two values and then this tells me what I need to end up with okay so what are the factors of 18 1 times 18 2 times 9 3 times 6 4 does not go into 18 5 does not go into 18 and 6 is already on the list so we're done as far as all of the factors of 18 now um, which of these subtract to give me 7 that would be these guys so I'm going to have a 2 here and a 9 here. Now the signs are also very important. If this sign, whatever that is, that if it's positive, the signs have to be the same, right? Because a negative times a, a negative will give me a positive, and a positive times a positive will give me a positive. If that sign is negative, then the signs need to be different. So that you have one of them as a positive, the other as a negative, and when you multiply them, you end up with a negative. This one is always the sign of the larger number. No matter what um, it is, whether this is positive or whether this is negative is irrelevant, it's always going to be the sign of the larger number. So 9 is my larger number, and that's positive, so my 9 is going to be positive. But because this is negative, that means that the signs need to be different. So this one cannot also be positive. It has to be negative. So that the signs are different, but that is still the sign of the larger number. And if you're not sure, you can always check your answer. That's what's really cool about factoring, is if you just multiply everything out, you can check your answer. So z times z is z squared. z times positive 9 is positive 9z. Negative 2 times z is negative 2z. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. And if I combine my like terms in the middle, I get positive 7z. And I end up with exactly the same thing. So it does check out. Um, now, let's go ahead and look at this one. So here I have a positive sign, which means they're going to have the same sign, both of my factors. Not only that, it's telling me I'm going to add the numbers, okay? And then this one is going to be the sign of the larger number. So, 4, the factors of 4 are 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. But which ones will add to give us 4? That would be, or I'm sorry, add to give us this 5. That would be 1 and 4. So I'm going to have x times x to get x squared, and 1 times 4 to get 4. Now the bigger one has to be a negative, so that means this term has to be a negative. And then um, because this one's positive, they have to be the same sign, which means this one will also have to 
be negative. So, and again, you can check it, x times x is x squared, negative 4x, negative 1x, that'll be positive 4, and this does come out to negative 5x in the middle. Um, so, let's see. how we can do that. So we've got negative 5x. Now if we do this one, we're gonna use 12. So one times 12, two times six, three times four. Which one is gonna subtract to give us one? That would be these guys. So we're gonna have x in the front, x in the front, and then we're going to have three and four. The bigger one has to be negative, this is negative, which means this one has to be positive. Again, check x squared, minus 4x, positive 3x, negative 12, and that does come out to negative 1x, which is what we had in the middle. Now we're here, again, 12. I've already broken up 12, so I'm not going to do it again. But this time I want them to add to give me 8, and that would be this group instead. So x and x, 6 and 2. The bigger one has to be positive, and because this is positive, they should both be positive. So that when I multiply a positive times a positive, I end up with a positive. Now again, you can check your answer, x squared plus 2x plus 6x plus 12, and the middle term does turn out to be positive 8x.